Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And I'm pre recording this stuff. That's why I was. In. So, as I'm recording this, you probably won't see this for another week or two, maybe more. But just got done watching X Files Season 11, which, let's be honest, this is the final season. They're not, they're not doing any more stuff. Because Gillian Anderson said she was done. Which, watching this, I don't blame her. Um, even though I'm sure Fox would have had a season 12 because of the novelty, the name of the X-Files. I still don't think this was doing the ratings that I'm sure the studio hoped. Because X-Files is such a big part of pop culture. But this is a revival that you did not need. And I'll say this, I mean... Thanks go out to my friend John the Zero Cool for sending me this. He wanted to hear my thoughts on it. I'll say this. It's not as bad as season 10. Only because of those six episodes, there's like one good one and then one or two halfway okay ones. But it has such a horrible beginning, a terrible conclusion that was a cliffhanger that, oh, there's a virus infecting the whole world and looked like everyone was going to die. That's not the case in this. The finale of this, it does not end on a cliffhanger. It doesn't end. It ends with Mulder and Stoli hugging after Mulder has shot the cigarette smoking man. And Stoli is pregnant again. Which I'll get to. But. Even with that said. While there are a couple. Like I said. A couple of good episodes. This is still a really. Trash season. Again season 10. I would say is the worst. But this is up there. And if you want to hear my thoughts on season 10. I've. By this point, I made two videos. I made one when I first saw it, what, two, three years ago? That's still up. And then I have one. Um, should be uploaded by the time you see this. But now that I've been rambling enough, let's get to this while I lower down the lighting. It starts off with a craft fest called My Struggle 3, the premiere episode. Which, <laughs> this is how lazy Chris Farter is. You know, well, you may not know. At the end of season 10, it ended on a cliffhanger where this virus is infecting anyone. Mulder is pretty much dying. Mulder and Stoli and others were on a bridge. There's a UFO that we saw previously blow up one car. So you think, okay, it's going to blow them up. It's going to kill everybody. Well, that whole ending of season 10, that episode, in fact, really, the entire episode of the last episode of season 10 was a vision, was a dream. This is how fucking lazy the writers are. They rolled the scissors in the corner and like, whoop, it was a dream, it was a vision, it was a vision for what will come. And then you have like Mulder doesn't believe her at first for some reason, but then he does. They're trying to find their son William, who's now a teenager, who can shape shift. Still don't know how the hell the cigarette smoking man is alive when I saw him turn to a fucking skeleton at the end of season nine. I don't know how the fuck that works. For some reason, Reyes monitor. I mean, this was the woman, uh, Annabeth Dish, I believe is the actress's name, who partnered with Robert Patrick for season nine and bits of season eight. She was a decent character, decent actress. Now she's working with the cigarette smoky man. And then the last episode, like, oh, well, well she's kind of helping Mulder and Stoli. But then she gets shot in the head and she's dead. I'm like, what the fuck? Way to go to trash that character, Chris Farter. I'm, you know, 
I remember I mentioned before, like, how come Robert Patrick isn't in this? I've heard that he was doing another show. Of course, then I'm like, what about season 10? You know, I'm glad nowadays. I'm glad they didn't put Robert Patrick. They, just, they probably would have just killed his teardrop off, too. Or made him a random villain. Or did some other stupid shit. Because Chris Carter doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's a phony hack nowadays. Been like that for a while. Ever since I just wanted to believe. But to kiss my ass. And just. You get a boring, boring as hell car chase. For some reason, Mulder still doesn't trust Skinner despite all the shit Skinner has done for him. I thought we were past that. Hell, in, in a later episode, you have a, another, like, what was his name? Kirsch. Which he helped Mulder and Scully steep at the end of season nine. But then he has one scene here and he's back to being. I did does this series just have selective fucking amnesia? Is that what it is? They think the audience is so fucking dumb, idiotic, moronic, dipshit, dull witted, dim witted, butt fuck of a frenzy of brain cells being diluted by dilithium fucking crystals that were just brainless zombies that, oh, but uh, what happened? We don't know. We can't remember five seconds. Yes, I can, Chris Carter. You fuck. You dumbass. People are like, why don't you yell and stream? Because I don't want to hurt my voice because of this bullshit. If that happened in the past. So that... That sucked fucking ass. So again, it's like, oh yeah, the last episode of season 10, that was bullshit. And it's like, well, why don't you retcon the entire fucking season? And for those who didn't see my rant on season 10, one of the things I hated the most was the whole retcon of like the past five fucking years of that show being, oh, it wasn't the government working with aliens, even though I saw alien rebels whose eyes were messed up and they killed the syndicate by lighting them on fire, even though I saw plenty of alien bounty hunters played by like Brian Thompson from Cobra even though I saw the first movie in 1998 which had aliens the black oil you know aliens coming out of people's stomachs through the pods trying to tap Mulder while he's trying to get Scully out of a spaceship in the 1998 movie X-Files fight the future even though I saw all that and 50 other fucking things Black oil. Oh, no, it wasn't aliens. It's the government took alien technology and they just did it themselves. Because they, they want to pull Thanos. Don't treat me like a fucking moron. And people buy into this shit. Some days I wonder if people just like eating shit. I don't. I don't like drinking piss. It's not piss. It's mill yellow. Seriously, if you like to teach their own, but please explain it to me how when they treat you like an idiot, you don't get mad about it. I don't understand. Please explain it to me. Please. About how Cigarette Smokey Man literally was in a cave, got hit with a missile, blown to bits to the point it revealed his fucking skeleton. Unless he really is Wolverine with a healing factor that make Wolverine come in his tights. I would love for someone to know. I mean, someone to tell me. And yeah. But anyway, that's the My Struggle 3. And again, hey, that character you like, Monta Reyes, she's with the Smoky Man for some fucking reason. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I thought it was just 
humans and say there's supposed to be doing this. But I guess he needs William's DNA. Oh, and that's the final straw in the shit stain. This whole time you're you're thinking that William is the son of Mulder and Stully. Just oh wow, they're pregnant and what's gonna become of William and this is a miracle. Oh once again the rug is pulled out from under you. It was to say you're a smoky man who with science, alien science, impregnated Stully. So technically it's Cigarette Smoky Man's son. Just like Mulder is Cigarette Smoky Man's son. And this other guy is Cigarette Smoky Man's son. I'm gonna be surprised if they had another season. If they did and fucking Skinner is Cigarette Smoky Man's son. Fuck. So like you, you took what was the nice in the previous season, you know, season, when was it, eight, nine, I can't remember when that happened, seven, eight, seven, or I can't remember. You, you couldn't leave that alone, like, oh my god, we're, we're pregnant, you got pregnant? But yet there's no way for you to get pregnant. It's a miracle. And who knows what William could be. I thought maybe it'd be like. It doesn't matter what I think. And then. Chris Carter pulls it again. Just at the end. They think the William is dead. But he's not. And they pulled the same thing. Where you know Stoli goes to Mulder. I'm pregnant. That's impossible. I know. So he pulled the miracle thing again. They already did in the past. <laughs> what? These people get paid to write this shit. They get paid to write this fucking bullshit. But I mean... The next episode, you know, a good chunk of them are standalones, which are usually better than the mythology, which is up shit creek now since they flushed away past five, six seasons of the fucking show for some reason. Flush it down the fucking toilet. This. Pretty much. This NSA has a simulation and they're designed to come to life when participants die. Because they're contacted by phone Mulder and Stoli by the consciousness of Laneley, one of the three lone gunmen. And it's like, you guys shut down this thing because we're digital slaves and the ideas are being harvested. So the chunk of the film, they're pretty much hunted down by bad guys. They're Molden Stoli gets shot at, at their house. They shoot some bad guys. They get shot at, at a cemetery. They shoot that bad guy. Or at least, not really shoot him, but make him hit his head on a tombstone. They talk to a woman. They get her killed. Is they aiming for the agents and they shoot the this girl that's giving them info. They get to the place, they shut down the place, they get some FBI, they come there, everything's gone. And then the episode ends with they get another f phone call, and it's Lane Lee again saying, There's a backup, Mulder, you gotta get this backup shut down. And then it ends. And you never hear of it again in the entire season. And I'm like, I understand. I'm a fan of the X-Files. I know there's a lot of times where not everything is tied into a bow. Number one, times have changed. Number two, you can't, you just made your episode completely pointless. Completely useless. It was the point of going through all this to shut this down so these things were not digital slaves. And it, they did it and it wasn't enough. 
So it's asking help again, and then nothing's ever done. So the episode just becomes completely and utterly pointless and useless. As in there's no fucking reason to have even watched this episode. Nothing is solved. Nothing has changed. They were the same at the beginning as they were at the end. So what was the fucking point? So that episode sucked. The next standalone, standalone episode, that sucked too, called Plus One. Just a very boring story where Mole and Stoli investigate these people who seem like they see their doppelgangers. Like one's driving a car and the guy sees himself pull the wheel and get into a car crash. Pretty much it's about this two twins, a guy and a girl, who play this telepathic game, game of Hainman. It was just a really boring story, boring monster, you know, monster of the week type of episode. It just, it went at a slow pace. It wasn't that interesting. The supernatural element wasn't that intriguing. And the ending is just, each of the twins, they can't determine which agent to kill. One wants to kill Scully, one wants to kill Mulder. So they get pissed at each other. They end up writing each other's names and they end up killing themselves by accident, pretty much. Or, like, she kills her twin and he kills his twin like, in, a, in a rage. And then they realize they fucked up. So, plus one, minus three, and counting. That's three episodes so far. All three of them sucked ass. It's not good. It's not a good fucking track record for this fucking season. Then we get to the first decent episode. I say this is one of the decent ones. called The Lost Art of Forehead Sweat. Really dumb title. But it's a fun comedic episode where they meet this guy who says I know you and you like this episode the Twilight Zone but you could never find it and you like this one other thing it goes into the Mandela effect you know perceived reality there's a fun montage where the guy's trying to make Mulder and Stoy believe that he's been with them from the beginning so they show a lot of clips of past episodes but the difference is that character has been included in each one. And at the end you find out that he's just a you know, crazy guy. But I mean, the way it was done, it was creative, it was fun, it was interesting. Uh, it's one of those comedic episodes where the actor is able to have a f bit of fun. Going outside the boundaries of their roles. And... Uh, you know, I'm like, wow, finally a decent episode. I mean, it was definitely worth the watch for, you know, fans of the show, like myself. The next episode is Ghoulie. Nothing to do with Ghoulies. This is another one I didn't care for. Scully has his weird dream. She wakes out. I mean, she wakes up. It might have been sleep paralysis. These two girls get attacked because th they see the other and they think they're seeing a monster so they attack but then they realize they've hurt each other. And you kind of realize that it's connected to their son William. Which I didn't care for because it makes us not really like William. Because he's not trying to hurt the girls on purpose but it's like oh it's he's still like seems like playing with each of these girls emotions. I mean, why do you have two girlfriends? It's oh, this creature, it just came up in my head. And granted, the episode's talking about how he can't control it, but I, it just, I think it could have been handled better. I don't even remember how the conclusion went, to be honest. Oh, there's, there's guys chasing William. You know, since the 
Bad guys are chasing William because of his DNA. So here's more people chasing him. And like you said, he's a shapeshifter. But he can also... He makes these two bad guys think that the other's a monster and they shoot each other. Um, there's bits where this old guy keeps talking to Stolly and you realize it's William who sh shapeshifted just to get to know his mother a little bit. That's like the one little aspect I didn't mind. But other than that, very forgettable episode. The next one called Titten, which is a weird name for an episode. I mean, they explain why it's called that, but still, it's a weird title for an episode. This is another decent one. Uh, Mitch Pelleggi, a Skinner. You see a little bit of his background in Vietnam and the Marines, where he's with uh, another character played by Haley Joel Osment from The Sixth Sense. And this is nothing rude against the Haley Joel Osment. I didn't realize how big he had gotten, like... You know, I... That's not a knock against him. I'm just did not expect that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It just again is not something I expected. It's just my natural, uh, honest reaction. But I mean, he did fine in the bit where you know in Vietnam they had this thing they're supposed to protect. It gets shot. This green gas comes out and fets Haley Joel Osment. He goes crazy killing people. Cut to the present. Skinner is missing. Mulder and Stoli go after Skinner. They go to uh, rural Kentucky. And pretty much Haley Joe Osmond plays the son of the guy who was in Vietnam. And you know he talks about his father. There's this figure killing people around town. And you come to find out I forget if it was his father who was crazy and then he died or if the son decided to just continue with the father. Did. I, I forgot that part. But it ends with the son has these booby traps on in this house. Skinner falls through one, gets hurt. Uh, Molden stole it, goes to investi investigate Haley Joel Osmond's. You know, he, Haley Joel Osmond plays two characters. He played the father when we see him in the Vietnam scenes. And then he plays the, the grown up son. So the grown-up son, they ask him questions. Mulder, they drive away. Mulder's like, hey, something's up. They go back. They find Skinner. And one thing leads to another. And they make it so that Haley Joel Osmond falls into one of his booby traps and he gets killed. I thought this was a decent episode. It was nice to see Haley Joel Osmond again. I, I always thought he was a decent actor. Even as a kid actor, I always thought he was good. The idea, you know, have Vietnam and you have this weapon that, you know, affects people. I like that little idea. Uh, I'm a big fan of Mitch Pelleggi ever since Shocker with Wes Craven from 1989. I loved him in there to his Skinner. It's always nice to see him get more to do. Just to be honest, in season 10, 11, he had nothing to do. Like, he's right there, but he's given shit all to do. So it's nice to see him given a little bit of, of meat to, to eat, to consume, to play with. I like the moment where Mulder and Scully realized that Skinner gave up a lot by helping them throughout these years because he could have been a lot more su successful. And Skinner talks about how, no, I wanted to do this because back then, you know, I lost my trust in the government, but you guys, what you two do made me a believer in what, you know, there's such a thing as justice. I thought that was a nice moment for the character, for the relationship between the characters. So that's what I mean. And the reason it's called Kitten is that was the nickname of the... F when the guy was in Vietnam, the, the Hale Joe the father uh, character. Because he was a steer kid who always needed to be looked after by the younger Stinner in Vietnam. But again, that was a decent episode, like the the comedic one, Lost Art of Forehead Sweat. Now we get to the best episode of the season. The Actually, back to back, these are the two best episodes. One, I don't even know how the hell you're supposed to pronounce this, but it's 
RM9SBG93ZXJZ. I thought this was the best episode of the season because it was unique, it was interesting, it was it was cool to watch. It's like wow, finally it, it smelled like a breath of fresh air. It's a breath of rank ass. Like wow, this is a breath of fresh air. I've been smelling rank ass all the time in this X file stuff lately. With some decent bits like the two I mentioned, but wow, finally a great episode. Just what's interesting, number one, there's very little dialogue in this episode, which was a change of pace. Number two, I don't think you see any other people other than Mulder and Stoli. Like, they're the only two people you actually see in the episode. Number three, it deals very much with AI, robots, you know, little drones. That was really fun and cool. What happens is Mulder and Scully decide to go to this fully automated sushi restaurant. And, you know, they punch the buttons and they talk to each other on phones, texting, and, you know, they push the buttons, but they get Mulder's order, order wrong. So he goes in the back and he realizes just robots back there making the stuff. So he comes back in and the thing's like, hey, we would like a tip. So of course he doesn't tip because he didn't. They didn't get the order right. Then that's when the shit starts hitting the fan. His credit card gets stuck. They go outside. The doors get locked, so they can't go back in. Stoli, uh, Stoli, Stoli takes a car that's automated. It goes batshit crazy, and there's like a fun little computer thing that has like a smiley face on it. Mulder is at his house and he's dealing with all these flying drones, the small flying drones, messing with him, getting through the door. Uh, at one point, there's like a hundred of tiny ones inside his house and following him outside. While Stoli, everything in her house getting screwed over, whether it be the, the coffee machine, the ice tube making machine, all that. And also makes you re relate to stuff like Mulder. You know how you try to call something and they always have the automated fucking phone and you can never get a human being. So that happens with Mulder when he's trying to report his credit card that's been, that he couldn't get out. And like Scully, when she's talking about trying to return something, she, you know how they're like, say this if you want this. Say returns if you want that. And she keeps saying it. And we do not know. We could not get your. They don't understand you. This automated voice. I, I've had that happen before. So you can relate to it. And then like just drones start chasing them. When they get back together. And then they get into this warehouse. And then like these four legged robots start chasing them. And it also is humorous too because this big robot comes in at the end towards them and it has a phone as Mulder's phone. And Mulder's like, what? And it's that thing that keep popping up throughout the episode. This is your last chance. We, we would appreciate if you give us a tip. And Mulder f does the 10% tip. Thank you. And then all the robots leave. <laughs> so this would be like humorous entertaining, quirky, interesting. The fact that there's a small handful of dialogue. The only time you do see other people is at the end because I thought there was a nice sort of... It's not pretentious. It's not whipping you in the head with it. But it's a nice message on how don't let technology take too much control of yourself. Just at the end, they go to a regular cafe with people all around. They put away their phones. They hold their hands together. It was a nice little message that again wasn't hammered at home, but it I, I understood it well enough. I'm like, thank you. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Thank you very much. Why can't we have more of this? And then the next episode, I would say is the second best. 
call familiar. And I have to think they were inspired a little bit by the new Stephen King's It, only because it starts out with a little boy at a ter- you know, kid's playground. There's a figure wearing, looks like a wannabe slender, but it's this really creepy looking thing that is on a kid's show, which I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if that'd ever be on a kid's show. It looks too creepy. Well, I've seen Teletubbies advertised, so maybe that's, uh, maybe it is the right amount of creepy. I've seen that advertised on the internet back in the day. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And there's actually another show that is like a wannabe Teletubbies on this as well, but this other one is like a really, it's a, it's a figure that his name might as well be called Chester the Molester, but I forget what the hell it was called. But the kid follows into the woods and he gets killed. Little kid. And so it's Mulder and Scully investigating the death of this child. And I like the look of the episode. It reminded me of the days when the X-Files were in Vancouver. Where, you know, the trees and the woods and, you know, the atmosphere. It's a story that deals with witchcraft. I thought I had a nice little message about how don't assume. You know how nowadays you're guilty until proven innocent. Instead of innocent until proven guilty. They do touch on that. Because they're trying to figure out who did this. And there was one person who was like a pedophile. But even the guy says it was statutory. And we were like almost the same age. And But you know it's. Even Mulder says it's like a, a form of witchcraft or McCarthyism. And I like that they touch on that because that is an issue that is prominent in today's age. But again, they don't hammer it home to annoyance, but I like that that's a part of the story. And then you find out what's really going on. And it ends with, you know, this person who was reading this stuff being lit on fire. Which is a pretty good effect on how they did it. I don't know, I just, I like the vibe, the, the atmosphere, the, and the creepy, like, kid type, like the, the wannabe Teletubby and the wannabe, the, using the, the kid shows as the device for bringing the kids out of their safety and into danger. I, I just thought it was a pretty good episode. It is... It reminded me of those episodes back in the day, like Die Hand, Die Verlitz, or some of those other ones. Those who really know X-Files, they know what I'm talking about. So I liked that one. It's called Familiar. Then you get to the last two. Nothing Lasts Forever is lame as fuck. Pretty much about ritual killing. It tries really in-depth into religion. Uh... This cult where they consume organs and surgically conjoin themselves to reverse the aging process. The story just wasn't that interesting. It tries. It seems like a lot of times when they try to go into religion on the X Files throughout the years, those are the more clunkier episodes I come to find out. I mean, hell, that was the worst episode last year. Well,. One of, I will say, not the worst, one of the worst episodes, that Babylon, where Mulder got high on mushrooms and saying eight, dancing the 80 breaky fucking heart and stupid visions and dealing with Muslim terrorism, which that, yeah, we needed to have that on an X-Files episode that was in season 10, easily one of the worst episodes. And this is as bad as that, but it's still a very boring one. When the there's this woman stating people at the beginning, I thought it was going to be about vampires or something, but no, not the case. And Stoli really has nothing to do. That's a lot of the season. Like Stoli doesn't have a lot to do in this season. And again, I can see why Gillian Anderson would not want to come back for another one. Also, 
I don't know what happened to her voice, but her voice seems to like got a lot more like raspy. Like a lot of times she's talking like this. And I'm like, what the hell is going on with Jillian Anderson's voice? Is she okay? Like, why does she have this weird raspy voice? Uh, you know, if someone knows, please feel free to educate me. But I don't understand why she had this voice, this weird voice going on throughout the entire season. Just wonky as voice. Didn't understand. But that, that was a really boring episode. Nothing noteworthy to talk about. And then you get the last episode, which, let's face it, this is the last episode of the series. And it's so underwhelming that a fucking fart would have made more of an explosion than this episode. They're looking for their son, Mulder and Stoli. Stoli and Mulder are separated from most of the fucking episode. Monica Reyes, she's a bad guy with Cigarette Spooky Man, but I guess not really, because she calls them. <sighs> Whatever. Why did he even have her in it, in it then? Chris Carter, who wrote and directed this episode, last episode. Which shows how shitty he is of a writer. Really not much happens other than running around looking until the end where Cedric Smokey Man and Reyes, Annabeth Dish, are in a car. Skinner is there to so that Mulder and Scully can go off find their son. Reyes wants to back up, but Cedric Smokey pushes it to go forward. Skinner shoots Monta Reyes in the head. Even though she's a good guy, but I guess, well, technically, Skinner would not know that. But still, it's like, what the fuck are you doing, Chris Carter? What a way to bury that character that Annabeth Dish played. That's why I'm glad Robert Patrick didn't come back. They probably would have shot him in the head, too. Was it because people hated season 8 and 9 so much? They're like, yeah, kill one of them. No, season 8 and 9 are better than this shit. I stand by that. And then, fucking... Assume, is to assume that Skinner dies, but I noticed how they did it where they could explain that away. When the car's going after Skinner, Skinner runs, he dives down, and then the car hits another car. So, they don't show this, but I assume he went under the car that was in front of him. And then when the car hit him behind, you know, imagine those are the wheels. And imagine the purse is laying down. Went under. And didn't really hit him. Maybe injured him, but didn't hit him. Of course, you didn't have to do that in the first place. You didn't have to do that at all. But, and yeah, this is Chris Carter we're talking about. Overrated writer. Fucking awful writer. Chris Carter, don't you realize that when people talk about the best episodes, they don't mention yours? Because you suck. Chris Farter. Then William decides to look like Mulder, meets the Cigarette Smoky Man. Cigarette Smoky Man thinks he's talking to Mulder and he wants to find the boy William. Shoots who he thinks is Mulder, but it's William who goes in the water. Then Mulder shoots the Cigarette Smoky Man a bunch of times who then fall, pushes him in the water. I'm like, Mulder, I know you shot like 18 bullets in the Cigarette Smoky Man, but this guy survived a missile and got turned to a skeleton. If that can't kill him, a bunch of fucking bullets can't either. But 
you're supposed to assume that Sidrus Volkman is dead. And then... Like, Stoli has found out that William wasn't really her son. Or, like, she bore him, but... A, what was the phrase? Your idea birthed him, but I was never really his mother. I'm like, then what the fuck was the point of these last two seasons where you're searching for William about, you know, be a mother, be a mother, be a mother. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't really his mother. And then Mulder's like, if I'm not a father to him, then what am I? But throughout most of the show, it looked like you didn't give much of a shit. And I don't blame that on David Duchovny. I blame that on the writing. And then, without them knowing, William pops back up because he's not dead. Because he's got alien DNA. Stola tells Mulder that she is pregnant. So, you're doing the miracle pregnancy again? You did that once before. Why are you repeating it? Then, it, you know, they hug and the fucking show ends. So yeah, granted, it didn't end on a cliffhanger where the whole world is ending, like season 10, which is one of the things I give this above season 10 for. But it wasn't fucking good either. I mean, the two mythology episodes are two of the worst fucking episodes of the season. The standalone episodes, I would say... Nothing Lasts Forever and Plus One were the worst standalone episodes. This could have been interesting if you had an ending that actually meant something. Like, hey, we accomplished something. It's one thing that you, know, you leave threads loose because many ep X-Files episodes are like that. But when you, when you made it so that nothing mattered and it was completely useless... No, I'm sorry. Not giving you a pass on that bullshit. I would say if somehow you're able to see this, watch the robot AI episode with this weird title RM9SBG93ZXJZ. I think it's one of those things that the certain numbers mean something. I forget what it is. That episode I would recommend familiar about witchcraft I will recommend that one and then maybe the one called Kitten to see Haley Joe Osmond and a bit more of Mitch Pelleggi and then maybe the Lost Art of Forehead Sweat just to see it like a goofy silly episode those are the four so granted that's four compared to like maybe one or two of season 10 of course season 10 had six episodes and this had 10 episodes so this is marginally better than season 10. I'm glad for John Zero Cool for sending this to me because at least I was able to see those good to decent three, four episodes. So what, do I give four out of 10 Bret Hart style? Because out of 10 episodes, I liked four. So four out of 10 Bret the Hitman Hart style. I just... I just see why Jillian Anderson, again, please let me know what what's up with her voice. Why was she so raspy? But her character's given nothing to do throughout pretty much the entire season. The mythology is so much junk. They might as well just completely forget about everything about it. Just dismiss everything. Why not? You already dismiss like the past five, six seasons. Why not? When you started season 10. And. You know season 9. You set up this whole thing about this. Colonization thing that will happen. A certain year. You know what Chris Carter. Maybe if you were smart, you would not have given it a fucking year. I think the year he gave was like 2012 or something. Don't give a certain year. See, in the future. And then when you're able to make a movie, you say, 
It's happening now. Hey, Chris Carr, I just fixed your shit. I just became a better writer than you, which isn't hard. See, so yeah, X Files is is done and dead like dinner. It's a uh, pathetic what this show has become. I'm a huge X Files fan. Over there, I have the nine seasons on DVD of the X Files. I have a friend who said he might be sending me the Blu-ray set because he might. De he, I think he bought one. He might get rid of an older set, but I don't know if that will actually happen. We'll see. Be nice to see the good X Files in Blu-ray. I mean, I'll keep this for the couple of decent episodes, but yeah, this is. <sighs> That's why I didn't want to be streaming and yelling because I knew I would have to talk about a lot of stuff and I didn't want my voice to be dead. But Chris Carr, you just need to retire and never touch anything again. David Duchovny, Jillian Anderson, they're getting old. Uh, David Duchovny looks worse for wear. I, I love David Duchovny, but it, the sad but true. The writing doesn't help these characters at all. I'm sorry, four episodes out of ten at best. That's pathetic. If you did, if you took a test in school and you got four answers out of ten right, you get an F on the F scale of fuck. Not an F plus, an F. Terrible fucking film. Terrible film. I keep wanting to say film because I'm so used to reviewing films. For features, not even much. A conversation on the Fox side is like. 10-15 minutes the Scully fed pretty much women going about how they were influenced by Scully to get into the field themselves a dad reel and a couple episodes have commentaries that's pretty much it but yeah not sure what else to say this is the final thing I'm doing for the X-Files unless one day I do a ranting commentary on X-Files I want to believe Maybe one day I'll do that, but it's sad what this show has become, man. It, it really is sad. You, I mean, like I said before, when you have the creator being too full of himself when sh someone else should have taken power and just disregarding five, six years Treat us like idiots. Like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense because he had this, 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 and this. But you're supposed to just have selective amnesia about it. Character's not done well. I mean, Stoli being artificially raped by the cigarette smoky man? Because he artificially impregnated her? I guess from the episode In A Me, which was a shitty episode anyway from back in the day. Not many people liked that episode back in the day. You referenced that one? And the fact it wasn't Mulder and Scully's kid. That was lame as fuck. Monica Reyes, the Annabeth Dish character who partnered with Robert Patrick in the last couple, you know, actual series. <laughs> last couple seasons. You trashed her character. Make a worker where the cigarette smoky man and then just get shot in the face while driving. Well, she was trying to back up. Cigarette smoky man drove forward and you kill her off. It is just so stupid and fucking pathetic. And then the ending is like, wow, this is why you have a revival for this. Like, what did we actually find out based on this two years revival? Think about it. These two seasons, what did we find out? The last five, six seasons were a lie. Uh, William wasn't actually your son, Mulder. Sorry. It wasn't a miracle baby. It was some bullshit. Skinner dies, maybe. Agent Reyes dies. 
William f fates his death, I guess, so that no one will chase him anymore. Sidrim, Sidrim spoke to me and dies for like the 15th fucking time. Because at one point in the show, he got tossed downstairs and supposedly dead. Then he got shot with a fucking missile in a cave. Turned to a skeleton and he was dead. And then he got shot 15 times and he's dead. What's next? You don't put him in carbonite and throw him to a fucking star? I'm done talking about this, but fuck this shit. Thanks for watching, Tate Tier. It's sad what my you know favorite TV show has become this bullshit. And it's like, it seems like I'm the only one that mentions this shit. Everyone's like, yeah, I love it, whatever. If you love it, feel free to explain why. You expect too much. No, I expect competence. Deleting or just making you think five, six years of the show didn't fucking matter to me is not competent writing. Pulling the rug out of you every five minutes is not competent writing. Among all the other stuff I mentioned. Even most of the standalone episodes, like 10, 9, 8, of the eight, four of them I didn't mind and four of them were crap. So there you go. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Later.